another month, another Plan With Me video, this time for May. This month I decided to try something entirely new for me and use craft paper in my journal. I know there's a million different spreads out there using craft paper, but for some reason I was afraid I wouldn't do it any justice. Finally for May, I decided to give it a shot and honestly I'm so happy I did. As soon as I finished my cover page, I was obsessed and I'm seriously kicking myself for not having tried it sooner. Well, I've hopped on the bandwagon at least, so hello to all my fellow craft paper users. I alternate a lot between one and two page covers, but my last few monthly covers were pretty elaborate, so I'm dialing it back a bit this month and going for something a little more simple. Since it's only one page, I did a quote page on the other half. This quote is something I really want to embody this month, and it says, Be the energy you want to attract. I've never really been one to believe in things like manifestation, but I do believe that you get back what you put out. Whether that be in work, relationships, or energy in general, your own mindset has a lot to do with how you live your life. When we're happy, we tend to see a lot of the good in things, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, when we're unhappy, we tend to see the negative side of everything. And either way, how we see things around us affects how we go through life. So I want to work on seeing things more positively to ensure that I continue attracting good things into my life. Does that make sense? Is anyone else more into the whole manifestation slash law of attraction shtick? Let me know what your opinions and advice are here. Anyway. I can't really do nice brush lettering with markers to save my life, so I had to draw out some faux calligraphy first and color it in for the same effect. I used to think this was kind of like cheating, like I wasn't a good enough artist if I couldn't do it freehand. But that's the exact opposite of this quote that I'm trying to embrace, so I'm cutting out those negative beliefs right now. I found this inspiration for my May cover on Pinterest, of course, where all things inspirational seem to stem from. My theme this month is going to be lilies, so I replaced the flowers in the original image with my own. And these are two different looking lilies, and honestly, I don't know if one is more realistic than the other, or if there's actually two or more different types of lilies. I just found the images on Pinterest to reference and kind of went up fat. I threw in a small border on the page, switching to an inverted look with the white ink over the craft paper. I also realized for this entire month that I wrote the month of May on each page when I have these gorgeous stickers for that very reason, so I guess I'll be saving those for next year since I have no use for them now. This next page is also new for me. I've always planned out my Instagram posts on the app Planoly, and that worked out pretty well for me. But I do tend to forget what I have scheduled sometimes, so this month I'm going to try out a new content planner in my journal. This layout is inspired by Anna at Journal Away yet again. She made a beautiful border full of soft, colorful clouds, which I loved, so obviously to suit my own theme, I replaced those with lilies. This did turn out to be a little more work than I thought it would be, since I decided to totally stuff the border full of flowers to make it look filled in. But I was happy with how it turned out, so I'm not complaining. On the right side of the page, I added a mini calendar with a section of any important dates. This part of the spread is less for content planning and more so just for a monthly overview in general. The remainder of the page is where I'll write out what content I have to post. When it's been edited, I'll fill in half of that box, and when it's been scheduled, I'll fill in the rest. I saved some space on the right hand side of the spread to convert it to a Dutch door. My merch theme was Magnolias and had my first Dutch door of the year and I was totally obsessed with it. I wanted to recreate that feeling again for May, and I thought this page was a good chance to do so. The other side of the Dutch door I dedicated to goals for the month. I made four goals for May. To sell 10 journals on Etsy, pay off my visa debt, which isn't much thankfully, to make a functional and sensible schedule for a good work-life balance, and to slow down my mind and body more. The last two are kind of interconnected. I struggle a lot with slowing myself down because of the fact that I don't really make a good balance for working and living. My mind is always in work mode, even when I'm supposed to be out enjoying things. 
I get myself so stressed out about all the things I have to do and forget to just live in the moment some. So this month I really want to work on that and separating my work mind from my home mind. The other side of this spread is going to be for the steps I can take to achieve each goal. So for my debt repayment goal, my steps will probably be something like reduce all unnecessary spending, put X amount of dollars onto my visa each week, and avoid putting any extra funds on my credit card. To the right of those steps, I added a little border of washi tape that will separate the lily drawings from both the lists and the content planner on the page before. I realize now that apparently I was in the mood for lots of drawing because this side border of lilies was just as much work as the border in the content planner spread, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Okay, so how many habits do you guys track in your journal? When I started my bullet journal, I tracked so many habits. Granted, I also had a lot of things that I wanted to improve on. So I started out with like 10 to 15 habits that I included in my trackers, but now I'm down to four or five usually. I started dialing this back because it was just becoming redundant the track things that I do regularly, but honestly, I kind of miss it now. Seeing a habit tracker stuffed with completed habits was really satisfying instead of constantly seeing the things that I need to work on improving more. I'm seriously considering adding more to my tracker next month just so I can give myself an ego boost. Which I know is ridiculous, so don't judge me. I added the four little lily drawings to the side of it to tie it all in, and voila! This other side is something I haven't done in a while, but I really wanted to bring back my monthly check-in page. I find this page to be really helpful for just journaling about how I'm feeling throughout the month. I keep a section for my physical and mental states, and periodically through the month I'll write about how I'm feeling. I skipped doing this page for the past few months because I felt like nothing was really changing, but honestly I think it's more beneficial to keep it as a regular, so I'm going to start doing that again. In the corner we have another big ol' lily. Nothing else to really say on this, so I'll leave you with these chilled beats instead of my rambling. Alright, next page. You may or may not know that I'm working on learning some basic Korean words and phrases. In the past months, I've just been jamming new words into my notes section or brain dump pages, but that's been taking up way too much space lately, so this time I'm actually going to dedicate a whole page to it. I've been watching a lot of videos by Korean Uni on YouTube to learn the basics, and her videos are so helpful. I love that she breaks down the pronunciations of each word and adds context in full sentences. I still struggle with why some words have things added on and others don't, but I know I'll get the hang of that. Eventually. This page is going to be pretty basic and empty because I'm going to need the majority of it for writing. Alright, this is the last page of the setup and the last page for this video. 
I decided to make a separate video for my weeklies that I'll post next week. I separated them into two videos and hoped to be making each of them a little more digestible since if I combined them in this one video it would be about 20 minutes long and not everyone wants to sit here for 20 minutes watching me draw. This page is broken up into four sections, a gratitude log, a rating system, what I'm proud of this month, and what I struggled with. This spread is inspired in part by Journal by Malin and Windress. I combined the two of them to create this layout and I love both of their ideas. I've used gratitude logs many times, but I really like Malin's idea of incorporating it into a review page. I've never done a rating system of any kind, so I thought this would be an interesting way to look back on the month. I split my ratings into four sections, an energy level, creativity level, anxiety level, and productivity level. I also struggle a lot with recognizing good things I've done, so I thought Vi's idea of including that in her review page was a great idea. Anyway, that's all for this video guys. Here's a final swipe through of these completed pages. I really hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for part 2 with my weekly spreads. Have a great day!